Welcome back to part two of this four part series in which I break down Grants Pass and show you what they have to offer. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Daniel Bufano, a realtor and team leader for the Bufano Home Team at Remax Integrity, located here in Grants Pass, and I make new videos all about our local real estate market and what it's like living here in Southern Oregon. So go ahead and hit that subscribe and notification button so you don't miss any great content. Okay, today we are going to dive into those county sections north of the river, starting off in Jones Creek and then moving up to Scoville, Colonial Valley, Merlin, and the rest of the North Valley, followed by the Azalea section. Before we begin in the county, I did want to mention that the majority of people that move here from out of town typically want something out in the county that has a bit more privacy and room for toys or animals, which is also why I live out in the county myself. The county or rural area also comes with significantly lower property taxes, which people love. However, there's a reason for that, and it's because the county offers far less public services than that of the city. For instance, the sheriff's office, because of a lack of funding, is not readily available as the city police department could be, which can be frustrating for people at times, and the county property owners still rely on private fire protection groups such as Rural Metro Fire to deal with house fires. These guys do an amazing job considering the area in which they have to cover. However, they're still not as quick as the city fire department because of the space between stations. And the other thing is, is that if you don't pay for the fire protection because it's optional and heaven forbid you have a fire, they will come and put it out. However, you may get a bill in the mail after it's all said and done. Maybe this is also a topic for another video. Pros and cons of living in the city versus the county, perhaps? Hmm. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to business. As you can see it laid out here on the screen, this area is called Jones Creek, and this one here is what I call the Scoville area. You can get to Jones Creek by following Foothill Boulevard, but go too far and, well, you might have end up in Rogue River. Scoville, on the other hand, is north of I-5, and the only way to get there from town is straight up 7th Street, past the In-N-Out Burger. Both of these areas are heavily residential, featuring properties of various age, size, and type. But as you move more towards the north and to the west a little bit, you'll find yourself in the popular Colonial Valley, which includes properties that typically range from 1 to 5 acres, but sometimes more, and most of the homes in this area are single-level ranches, usually with a shop that were typically built in the 70s and 80s, but there are also some newer custom builds in there as well, like this gorgeous beauty up here at the top. Check that link out, by the way. One of the things that I enjoy about Colonial Valley is that it's only about 10 minutes from town, and there is also about three different ways to get back into town. You could take Interstate 5, Highland Avenue, or even Granite Hill Road, which will all dump you right back into the top of town near Club Northwest and in and out. Continuing west from Colonial Valley, you will pass through the town of Merlin. Now, this little town is the gateway to the wild and scenic portion of the Rogue River, which includes a couple of restaurants and bars, such as Baldini's and Taco Mania, which is my favorite, by the way, but also includes a number of rafting and river outfitters, such as Orange Torpedo, Morrison's Rogue Wilderness Adventures, and a few others. Merlin is also where you'll find the Grants Pass Airport, which is only for private aircraft, by the way, and you'll also find Republic Services Transfer Station, also known as The Dump. But all jokes aside, this truly comes in handy when you have property on this side of town. Trust me. This whole area of Merlin and Colonial Valley, plus this large area to the north, is often referred to as the North Valley. It includes North Valley High School, of course, but also Fleming Middle and Manzanita Elementary School, plus a plethora of residential property, a lot of which can and are used as horse property. These areas here on the map are also known as the Hugo and the Jump Off Joe Creek Road areas, which are mostly residential and include some horse property, plus it also includes a KOA campground right off exit 66, which has one of the coolest swimming holes in the area. The North Valley also includes a cute little nine-hole golf course called the Red Mountain Golf Course, 
And if you're a gun enthusiast like me, you'll find one of the finest gun ranges in the region at the Josephine County Sportsman's Association. But let's back up and continue down the Merlin Galise Road where you'll enter the wild and scenic portion of the Rogue River. Hog Creek, Indian Mary, and Ennis Riffle County Parks are all popular areas for people to put in their rafts into the river and have themselves some fun. So now that we've gone as far west as we can, I'm going to backtrack here a second because we missed a very important area which is what is known as the Azalea area. Azalea is a very large area and truly includes some incredible property of all sizes and price points. You can get to this area from Merlin on Azalea Drive and Robertson Bridge Road, or if you're coming from downtown Grants Pass, you can take Lower River Road which stretches the entire distance from town all the way until you meet up with the river and the famous Robertson Bridge that crosses over to an area we'll cover in the next video called Riverbanks. In addition to all the beautiful homes in this area, it also includes a few of the more popular county parks that sit on the river such as Matson and Whitehorse Park. Plus, there is a good amount of farmland like that of Fort Vernoy Farms and also the Rogue Creamery and Dairy Farm, which is where you can go to get cheese samples and all kinds of other fun stuff. What's also in this area right off of Lower River Road is the very cool Wildlife Images, which is an animal rehabilitation and education center that is a fun time for families to visit with their wide variety of animal species they have there to view. So there you have it. That covers the rural areas of Grants Pass that are north of the river. Any of those places sound interesting to you? Comment below on your favorite area to the north of the river, or if you're new to the area and want more information on Grants Pass, visit my website at www.bufanohometeam.com. While you're there, you can register for a home search, claim your free buyer's or seller's guide, or check out the community tab for a lot more information. And once again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh,